Welcome once again here to Indiana University South Bend Men's Basketball Media Day. I'm Paul Condry of Regional Radio Sports, joined by head coach Scott Cooper. Great that you've spent time with us here today on RRSN.com. And great, as always, to sit next to my friend uh, Scott Cooper. Coop, first of all, I was talking with Daniel Meredith earlier uh, today as we were going through some of the players' interviews. And one of the things that I kind of quipped with him about was the fact that I remember meeting with you the first year you were coaching here. And I remember this guy coming in, this said I don't know what you're what six foot nine about now and or something to that effect but I remember just thinking how beautiful that jet black hair was and now here we are <laughs> 10 years later there's a whole bunch of gray over there I don't know if it's hanging out with an old sportscaster like me that's driving you nuts or hanging out with these student athletes but just having fun and that's the thing that I really enjoyed about our relationship is what we've done over the course of the last decade is we've just always had a lot of fun doing this stuff. Yeah, well, it's a fun profession to be in. And uh, yeah, you're right, my hair was uh, far, far darker than it is now. Luckily, uh, the first three years of my daughter's life, she didn't know what the color gray was, so she just called it black for a while. So I've had that you know, kind of positive reinforcement for, at home, regardless of whether or not it's the truth. Well, the one thing about it, and I will say this, at least you have some of that right up there. So let's, first of all, let's just talk about the uh, the 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 thrilling last couple years that you've had. You've been so blessed with great senior leadership. We talked about Dylan Allen, Serge last year, and now you're going to come in with three great kids in Kenny Washington, my Miles Tracy, Daniel Meredith. This has kind of transformed really the culture of your program. Every team has, a, I think, if it's they have success, they have a group that comes in and changes the program forever. And I think from my perspective, and having done 20 years of IUSB sports, these last two classes have changed the mindset and the culture and the expectations of what any coach would want. Yeah, I, I, you're absolutely right, and I, you know, I think it goes back to I remember during a point in recruiting there, I was talking to the late now Matt English uh, at Beach Grove when we got Kenny Washington, and this is after we'd had Dylan Allen in our program already for a year, and he says, "Coach, you don't understand. You got something special there." I'm thinking, "Okay, you know, whatever, right?" You know, every coach kind of says that. He's like, "No, really, you got something special," and uh, he couldn't have been more right. Like we just had, we've got great kids who, you know, have taken this to another level, and you know, there's a line I think in the movie uh, The Princess Bride. Uh, it says something along the lines of, uh, you know, you know, say it's not possible only because it's never been done before and things like that. And these guys have really kind of taken that to heart and really, uh, you know, pushed things to another level that we didn't know was possible here. Well, you've done a really nice job of going to the Circle City and really – uh, snatching some great talent. I know teams that, that are down there have uh, have missed out greatly on some of the players that you've brought north, and that's been a really nice hotbed for you. So uh, I know if you talk to each one of the boys, they'll tell you that uh, one of the allures was playing for you, and the second was kind of getting away from home. And uh, so that experience has been good. But you've made it home for them, home away from home, if you will. Yeah, and I think South Bend in itself just kind of lends itself to kids who are from a city like Indianapolis. You know, it, it's one of the bigger cities, obviously, in Indiana. And, you know, we're because we're the type of school that we are, the kids can have a life outside of school and basketball that allows them to maybe feel a little bit more at home than maybe a more residential college would, just where they're kind of stuck on campus and not allowed to leave and have curfews and things like that. So I, th I think that's just some of the advantages that we have. And then obviously, you know, an IU degree and the price point that we have obviously help out quite a bit too. All right, 19 wins in league play, 25 wins overall, uh, and just the expectations have to be uh, tremendously great with this group coming back. But however, you're going to lose a kid in Dylan Allen that will probably be the hardest player you've ever had to replace, not because of his point production or anything else, but his presence that he demanded on the floor and in the locker room. So let's just give some props to Dylan Allen on his tremendous career. His swan song season was pretty special. Yeah, and really, you know, you talk about our program getting to where it is now, and it all started with him. You know, he was the guy who, you know, was the first one to commit in that class and, uh, you know, was the guy who kind of stuck with it when things weren't going well his freshman year. We were pretty poor that year, but, you know, he's the one who's kind of talking to these guys from Indianapolis that you're talking about and what kind of place it was and, you know, led to a lot of those guys coming here. So just that in itself and his belief in what we could be was a, was a big part of why we are where we're at. So the three boys that we mentioned earlier, Washington, Tracy, and Meredith, uh, they've got themselves in a really unique role from a uh, offensive, defensive production situation, but also from a leadership standpoint. 
Uh, can you talk about the off-season conversations and those meetings that you've had with those three guys and say, okay, this is what your new role is going to be? Let's just speak specifically about those three guys. Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing was just talking to them about being who they are, not trying to be Dylan Allen or not trying to be, you know, Sergio Diaz being the best version of Kenny Washington, the best version of Miles Tracy, the best version of Danielle Meredith, and so on and so forth. And understanding that even though our X's and O's are all the same, that the Jimmy jo- Jimmys and Joes are a little bit different now, and that uh, you know we've got to understand what our strengths are, and rather than trying to replace somebody, just being the better versions of themselves. And, and those guys are all really good players, and we've got some other ones there too that uh, we think that uh, you know they can take it to another level with uh, you know the experience that they've had. All right, we've got to let the roster here in front of us. You've got some other guys. Michael Poole's gonna, a guy who's got a bunch of minutes and, and uh, some talented young guys coming in. But also you've got brought in some young guys from away. But one of them that can, on immediately should make an impact is, and that's DeJon Barney, the youngster who played a lot of minutes for Lincoln College when that college shut down. But he's a true big, a guy that creates all kinds of matchup problems for any team in any league you're going to compete against. Yeah, no, he's, he's a really special player. And, you know, we talked about it a little bit during the recruiting process with him that there are, you know, 10 all-conference players, I think, returning in the league this year. And, you know, with him on our team, now we'll have three of them. Um, and, and in our league, they don't name very many all-conference players, so that's, that's not easy to have. And uh, um, it's, it's interesting to see him kind of – you know, with our guys because he can do a lot more than what I realized he could do when we recruited him. Uh, you know, obviously we knew him from what his role was at Lincoln, and they had a very small team around him, so he was kind of stuck near the hoop and doing the things there. But he's, he's got a game away from the hoop. He's incredibly mobile and good in a ball screen. He was really just kind of a natural fit uh, that's been really kind of pleasant to see, and we're looking forward to getting started in practice here so we can really, uh, you know, see what we can take advantage of him with. But, uh, you know, you mentioned Micah Poole, too. Micah's been outstanding for us here for, you know, the last two or three years, and uh, He's a kid that uh, really stepped up big there in that COVID year when we made a run. And, uh, you know, obviously last year I think he averaged double figures off the bench for us, and he's going to move into a bigger role. And we expect that, you know, we're expecting big things out of him. And, and truthfully, I think he's an all conference level, uh, you know, player as well, even though he hasn't necessarily got that kind of recognition. All right. With some of the other guys you brought in, as well as some of the other veterans, who else is going to have to have good years for you? Well, Spencer Pettit's, you know, Spencer Pettit's another guy. You know, he started for us and played 30 minutes a game last year, and, and he's been awesome. We weren't really expecting to have him back, and he kind of actually, speaking of Barney, when uh, when Dejan came in to, uh, you know, work out with our guys during his recruiting visit, then that, that afternoon Spencer comes to me and says, hey, Coach, what do you think about me coming back next year with my extra year of eligibility, even though he's graduated and everything? And um, I was like, well, I'd, listen, I'd love to have you. You've been great for us. And, you know, here's how things going. He's like, and his, his exact response was to me as well, if we get Dejan, I'll just come off the bench. Like, to have a kid who is – that impactful on a really good team last year, just be that unselfish, uh, tells you just how important he is to us. And he's one of our better defenders. He really makes our offense go, even though maybe his numbers don't show it. Um, he's a big part of that. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, guys like Sam Snodgrass, who got some minutes, we're really expecting, uh, you know, some big things out of him this year in a similar role. Uh, Davion Davis, who's been a good player for us, had some injury issues uh, his first couple of years. I, I'm excited to see what he can do because um, he kind of showed some flashes last year when he did get to play. And then, uh, you know, the, we've got some staples like Dane Samadovic, who maybe doesn't have play, got to play big minutes in the past, but he's always been ready to go when we've needed him and, you know, gave us some big moments last year against teams like Holy Cross and St. Ambrose and, um, you know, a big win over Roosevelt there when we were down a whole lot of guys. So, um, that, again, to have that kind of experience is really exciting. And then we got some young guys uh, that I think have a really good future here too. It's been, uh, you know, neat to see the progress that guys like uh, Ross Thompson and Alex uh, – that Schmidt and um, Deshaun Burnett have made. They've really, really gotten better over the summer, and uh, you know, and then bringing a couple of, or three freshmen that uh, I think all are going to be really good players at some point, and hopefully, you know, sooner rather than later. I, I'm excited about what we've got. Let's talk about the Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference. Obviously, you've got to be uh, one of the top two or three teams in that league going in. And I know in talking with the boys earlier today, one of the goals that they have is to finally win the regular season conference championship following that up with a postseason conference tournament championship and of course uh, a further deep run in the postseason at the NAI national tournament series so talk about those three perspectives and some things that you're going to have to do to make those things happen uh, you know I think the big thing for us is you know the things that made us successful last year is just being consistent every single night I, I you know, I don't know if we were the most talented team or not last year but I think the one thing we were we were probably other than all of that the most consistent team from night to night um, and we've got to have that again. And, you know, that started, I think that's one thing we really got out of Dylan, where if you really look on a game-by-game basis, like 
didn't really have any huge games, but he never really had any bad games either, and that kind of trickled down to everybody else. And um, you know, if we're going to have a chance at a conference, you know, a regular season championship, we're going to have to be very, very consistent again. Um, but I, you know, I like the group we've got. I think we've got about as talented, a, you know, first six, especially talented, and experienced um, as, as you can get probably in our league. And uh, but there's so many unknowns in our league. You know, who knows what everybody else has got? It's uh, a lot of teams graduated a lot, and that can work both directions. So. Um, it's not going to be easy by any means, especially with as many teams as we have in the conference. But, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to have a chance to be in the mix. Scott Cooper, who so looks at moving on past year number 10 to many, many more. And a few more gray hairs to possibly pot, add to that cranium. Once again, we're just thrilled to be a part of the IU South Bend men's basketball. For Scott Cooper, I'm Paul Condry. Thanks for joining us here from Indiana University South Bend Student Activity Center on Media Day.